heavens and the earth. There is no question in scientists' minds that there was a beginning. But what they can't answer is how it began, or more importantly, why. Why is there something rather than nothing? Is the universe merely a product of random chance? No. 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 Or does it reflect the order and information that speak of an intelligent mind behind it all? Some have suggested that the universe could pop into existence out of nothing. But what they fail to tell you is that in quantum terms, nothing isn't really nothing. It includes the laws of physics. For example, the notes that you hear from this keyboard tonight could not be made without it first existing. So either you believe in an eternal set of laws, or an eternal law given. And then there's the question of life and how did it begin? Some scientists and philosophers say that evolution can explain everything. But unfortunately, evolution is a theory that only tells you what happens once you have life. It can't tell you how it began. And the probability that it could have happened by chance is staggering. Have you ever pocket texted somebody by accident? <laughs> you might get a few letters that are strung together that make no sense. Kind of like the ones that my mom sends me sometimes. <laughs> if someone texted you and said, don't tell anyone, but I cheated on the test, the chances you could claim that you pocket texted that would be extremely high. But what if it was an ordered sentence of three billion letters perfectly in a row? That's the intelligent information in our human genome, in our DNA. <coughs> the most accurate statement about us as humans is that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And for the question of why we are here, we were created for relationship. Relationship with God and each other. Something happened to this wonderful creation. A destructive virus was introduced into the system called evil. And evil is the opposite of good. And evil is a choice. It is a wrong choice. And the evidence of morality, again, points to the God that made us. Because without God, there would be no basis for morality. As the Russian writer Dostoevsky said, if there is no God, then all things are permissible. But why would a loving God allow evil? It was the risk he took to give mankind a real freedom to choose. But evil would not have the last word. God entered his own creation as a man, Jesus Christ. And he lived the life that we should have lived by choosing to do good and not evil. And he died the death that we should have died in our place. He took the punishment for our evil upon himself on the cross. And three days later, he rose from the dead, proving he was the Son of God. He ultimately broke the power of evil over us. As Jesus said, he said, I was dead, I'm alive forevermore. He said, I have the keys of death and hell. It's when Christ comes to live inside of us that we give the ultimate proof that he indeed exists. The God that created the galaxies, he lives on the inside of every heart that believes the gospel. And he is ready to roar like a lion. God is not dead.
see a revolution. Sorry.